In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use the iframe tag. The iframe tag can be used to create an inline frame or subwindow within a web page. This subwindow can contain another web page. This video will start by showing the basics of the iframe tag along with some of its attributes, and I'll finish by showing how to change the contents of an iframe tag using an anchor tag. We'll start by going to littlewebhut.com where we can test out some of the sample code. So type in www.littlewebhut.com in your browser. Next, I'll click on the HTML menu. This brings us to a list of HTML tags. Now I'll click on the iframe tag to pull up information about this tag. The first thing to notice here in the red is that the iframe tag is allowed in the DTD transition and frame set documents, but not strict documents. If you don't understand what this means, then you can click on the DTD link for more information. The next thing to look at is the syntax for the iframe tag. We can see that it uses an opening frame tag and a closing frame tag. The content, which is placed between the opening and closing tags, will be displayed in the event that the browser does not support iframes. If the browser does support iframes, then the content between the opening and closing iframe tags will not be displayed. Here we can see example code using the iframe tag. Here is the opening tag, the closing tag, and this notice here will be displayed in the event that the browser does not support iframes. This example uses three different iframe attributes. The width of the iframe is specified here in pixels. You can also specify the width as a percentage if the value is followed by a percent sign. The height of the iframe is also specified here in pixels. Again, you can specify the height as a percentage if the value is followed by a percent sign. Finally, the source of the iframe is specified using the source attribute. This attribute can use relative or absolute addressing for the source web page. This is an example of relative addressing, which can be used when the web page is loaded within the same directory structure as the current displayed web page. If you would like to display a web page like Yahoo, for instance, you need to proceed the web address with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. I'll show you how to do this a little later. Now I'll press the test it XHTML style button, which will allow me to experiment with the iframe tag. Here is the iframe tag. Let's start by testing the code as is. I press the Review Results button here to test it. You'll see that a web page is displayed here within the iframe. Since the web page is larger than the iframe, scroll bars are displayed that will allow you to scroll to different parts of the web page. If you don't want the scroll bars to be displayed, you can add the scrolling attribute. I'll show you how to do this. I'll type scrolling, and I'll set its attribute to no. Now when I press the view results button, you can see that no scroll bars are displayed. If I change the scrolling attribute to yes, and then press the view results button, you'll see that the scroll bars are back. Now let's say that we want to change the size of the iframe. I'm going to change the width from 400 pixels to 80% of the available space. So I'll change the width attribute here from 400 to 80 percent. Typing the percent sign tells the browser that the value is a percentage rather than the number of pixels. Pressing the review results button, 
We can now see that the iframe occupies 80% of the available space. Now let's go back up to our HTML code and change the source attribute to use an absolute address. I'll change this address to load Yahoo. So I start with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www dot yahoo dot com. Let's test this by pressing the view results button again. Here you see the Yahoo page. Now I'll show you what happens if you don't precede the address with the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. I'll press the view results button and now you'll notice a message is displayed saying the web page was not found. So I'm going to add the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash back again. The source attribute specifies the address that will be displayed when the iframe is first displayed. The contents of the iframe can be changed using an anchor tag. I'll show you how to do this. So let's start here by creating an anchor tag, which is just A. And then I'm going to add an href attribute. This attribute lets me specify the page that I want to display. In this case, I'm going to set it to littlewebhut.com. And now I'll close this opening tag and create the closing tag for it. And in between the opening and closing tags is where I put the text that will be displayed for this link. I also want to add a line break tag before this anchor tag so that the link will be displayed on a new line. Now we need a way to associate this link with the iframe. We do this by adding the name and ID attributes to the iframe tag. Using both the name and ID attributes will help increase forward and backward compatibility. I don't need the scrolling attribute anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And now I'll create the name attribute and let's set its value to test1. And Now I'll create an ID attribute and I'll set its value to the same value of test1. Next I come down to the anchor tag and I'm going to create an attribute called target. And I need to set this value to the same value that I used above for the name and ID attributes. And now I'm going to make a copy of the anchor tag and the line break tag that I had above. And I'm going to paste it below this anchor tag. And next I'm going to change the link in the second anchor to Yahoo. And I also need to change the link text here to Yahoo. And now we're ready to test it by pressing the View Results button. As you can see, we now have a little Web Hut link and a Yahoo link. When I press the little Web Hut link, this page is displayed in the iframe. When I press the Yahoo link, the Yahoo page is displayed in the iframe. And I can go back and forth between these two as often as I would like. Well, that's the iframe tag. You can take a look at the web page here for more details and examples. And thanks for watching, and please rate this video and leave a comment. Have a great day.